let's start chapter 5 surgical infection now uh, let's not move to the history and move straight to the microbiology uh, that is the most organisms involved in surgical site infection are streptococci, staphylococci, clostridium and aerobic gram negative base like E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, Bacteroids now in this in surgical site infection we have to know the types the three types are superficial surgical site infection deep surgical site infection and organ space infection uh, superficial does not cause bacteremia while the other two uh, may lead to bacteremia and septicemia and the source of infection of surgical site infection is mainly endogenous if appropriate antiseptic protocols are followed but if not exogenous infection or hospitalized acquired infection may also be there now we move on to the important point that is decisive period decisive period means the time period following the infection by the microorganisms after which the microorganisms have kind of settled uh, you know like the bacterial growth becomes established and infection is established so decisive period is a 4 hour interval before bacterial growth becomes established enough to cause infection after breach in the tissues so the antibiotics should be given before this period and the concentration to be should be highest at the tissue level during this period in order to prevent the bacterial infection so the risk factors which can cause to increase risk of wound infection are malnutrition metabolic diseases immunosuppression colonization and translocation of gi tract bacteria poor perfusion foreign body and poor surgical techniques and next we must read about the what is major and minor surgical site infection major surgical site infection means uh, it has significant quantity of post discharge and systemic uh, response and we must do some procedure to drain it minor means uh, we there is uh, post and infected fluid is discharged but there is no excessive discomfort delay in return to home or systemic signs so surgical site infection means infection at the site of surgery within 30 days of the surgery or within one year if there is any prosthesis or implants so abscess is the localized collection of pus which is surrounded by the granulation tissues now for the surgical site infection where is it, to determine whether it is severe or not we use the asepsis score a stands for additional treatment s stands for serous discharge e stands for erythema p for purulent exudate i for sep s s for separation of deep tissues i for isolation of the microorganism and s for prolonged stay more than 14 days in additional treatment we have antibiotic therapy requiring 10 point local uh, uh, drainage you know drainage under local anesthesia have 5 points and deprivement under general <laughs> anesthesia gets 10 point so in summary abscess requires drainage and we must do it under imaging guidance if the abscess is left open we do not require antibiotics but if we close the abscess then we must give antibiotics and we must try to keep the abscess cavity open and let it heal by secondary intention cellulitis means the infection is not localized and is spreading throughout the tissues mostly caused by staphylococcus aureus and streptococci gas gangrene is mostly caused by clostridium perfusans and it is associated with severe pain and crepitus whenever there is gas there is crepitus when also the gas is visible on x-rays and the wound produces thin brown sweet smelling exudates uh, then next clostridium tetanus if the, there is a risk of that we must give uh, tetanus stock sweat three times if it is non immunized one time if it is immunized five yearly it should be given next important one is necrotizing fasciitis it is also known as synergistic spreading gangrene or subdermal gangrene if it involves abdominal one it is known as melanie gangrene and if it involves scrotum it is known as fournier gangrene it is not caused by clostridia but mixed organisms like coliform staphylococci bacteroids anaerobic 
step to cocaine, peptide step to cocaine involved in systemic infection. Bacteria occurs mainly through the deep SSI, and it is quite dangerous if the patient has prosthesis because hematogenesis spread of the infection to the prosthesis can occur. Next, the important point in infection is SIRS. SIRS can be defined as presence of any two of hyperthermia more than 38 degrees Celsius or hypothermia less than 38 degrees Celsius, tachycardia greater than 90 beats per minute, tachypnea greater than 20 beats per minute, and white cell count more than 12,000 or less than 4,000. Uh, now, sepsis means if there is source plus infection, severe sepsis means if there is any organ dysfunctions. So, it leads to different uh, normally inflammatory process is helpful for the patient, but if uh, sepsis occurs then it is more dangerous to the patient. Now, the viral infection relevant to surgery are mainly hepatitis and HIV. So, we must know about the universal precautions. For universal precautions, the following points should be followed. We must use full face mask, if not then uh, spectacles. We must use water proof disposable gowns and drapes, we must use boots, we must use double gloves, the larger gloves should be worn on the inside, the surgery technique should be meticulous and then we must avoid unnecessary personnel and unnecessary movement in the uh, theatre and we must respect the SAPs, that means SAP instruments should be transferred in a kidney tray. Now if there is contamination we must uh, follow the post exposure prophylaxis and hollow needle injury is quite danger for viral transmission. So, for prevention of SSI, we must preoptively prepare the patient using baths, you know, and if we have to save, we have to save it in the operation here, but rather than saving, preoperative clipping is better. We must uh, prepare the skin using alcohol based solution like povidone, iodine and chlorhexidine. Mm, next prophylactic antibiotics, as I said that we must cover the definitive period. So, the IV administration of antibiotics at the induction of anesthesia is optimal. Uh, so, there are different types of surgery, clean, clean contaminated, contaminated and dirty. Clean means no viscous is opened. In clean, we do, do not require the antibody prophylaxis, but in others we do. In clean contaminated, the viscous is open, but there is no spillage. In contaminated, there is spillage and in dirty, we have incised through the abscess. Now, there is pus, perforation, etc. So, antibiotics should be repeated if there are duration of surgery long every 4 hour period and we must keep prophylactic antibiotics in clean surgery if the patient has uh, heart disease, prosthesis, etc. Now, post-operative wound infection now occurs takes 7 to 10 days to develop, even cellulitis takes 3 to 4 days to develop. Uh, so, that should be taken care according to the severity. So, before antibiotics, we must take culture each and every time. It is empiric antibiotics and after culture and sensitivity, we must change the antibiotics. So, the principle of antibiotic therapy is even if we use antibiotics, it does not replace surgical drainage. And if it is spreading or systemic infection, then only antibiotic is indicated. But if it is indicated, we must, we must not delay and change according to the a resistant pattern if it occurs. Uh, these are the various groups of antibiotics. That's it.